Hi guys, so for today's video, uh, I'm going to go over some fact questions and I'm going to go over um, the nomenclature and some uh, new rules that go along with that. So, <clears throat> starting off with nomenclature, the only difference now for nomenclature is that uh, we're going to be adding double bonds and we're going to be adding halogens, so bromine, chlorine, fluorine, iodine. So, uh, we're going to learn how to name, name these new uh, chains and um, the new priorities and ordering that uh, we have to take into consideration. So from now on, after test one, it's going to successively get harder. So she's going to add functional groups. And functional groups are anything like double bonds, triple bonds, uh, carboxyl groups, alcohols. Some of these will learn in orgo. A lot of these are learned in orgo too, but just things that come off the chain that are just, that make the chain simply not just a straight chain of just carbons, but includes other different properties. Um, and each one of these functional groups is going to have a different um, priority in terms of what makes what the parent chain. And cer uh, certain groups have a higher priority than others. And um, it's going to determine uh, what you're going to name your parent chain, what it's going to be. So before, the parent chain was just the longest chain, right? Nothing special about it because you only had straight carbons and you're just looking for the longest one, right? So all those rules still apply, but we're just going to shift them down a little bit in terms of, you know, what's most important. So now what's most important is we're going to look for... So we have two, two new groups. We have double bonds, right? And halogens, right? These are going to be coming off the chain. And we're going to determine what's the um, the parent chain based on, um, you know, where these are on the chain. So double bonds are much higher priority than halogens, okay? Halogens are the lowest priority. So I don't care where my halogens are usually. I usually never care. I'm looking for where my double bonds are. Okay, so all the old rules still apply, and essentially all it is, now we're looking for the longest chain with the most double bonds, okay? So that's, that's, the, that's the difference now, okay? And in terms of halogens and other things, that, that falls under, under most substituents, right? All right, so I find the longest chain with the most double bond, and then um, if I have two competing chains, I look at which one that are the same length, I look at which one has um, the most substituents, right? And then when I find the, you know, the chain that has the most substituents, and let's say now I have to find which, which direction do I la label it from, so left or right, right? So I can go from the left side all the way to the right side and go from the right side all the way to the left, si uh, left side is determined by, you know, lowest ranking of, of substituent groups. I think also including double bonds, okay? So we want our double bonds to be on and a lower lower number as always, right? So it's the same thing as any other substituent that comes off the ring. I want everything to be um, on the lowest number possible. And that'll determine whether I go from the left side or the right side. All right, and essentially it's the same rules, just now we've introduced priority. So I'm looking at the chain that has the most double bonds. And it doesn't matter if that chain is two carbons long or four carbons long. If it has more double bonds than everything else, and everything else is like, let's say it was 20 carbons and the place that had the double bonds was like four carbons long, I take the four carbon long chain as my parent. It doesn't matter. Um, I want the highest priority group in the, uh, as the parent. Okay. So there's a new, um, so the whole purpose of nomenclature is that anyone anywhere can take a name any name and or any molecule and they can name it or they can take a name and they can make the molecule and um, it'll give them the correct molecule that is being talked about being seen or whatever right so the whole purpose of this uh, is to help people you know write out a molecule properly the way 
it's being observed. So for double bonds, right, we can all agree that double bonds are pi bonds and they don't have uh, free rotation along along these bond bond angles, okay? So these groups are fixed uh, in, in space like this and they don't rotate around. So obviously these have a certain stereo stereochemistry, right? So sometimes we've learned already our, uh, we learned already cis and trans, right? So if I had like, you know, whatever, you know, and then I had something else, this would be the cis, and then if they're opposite, they'd be trans. But what if I don't have two groups that are comparable and very clearly I can say, oh, I have a cis, I have a trans. What if I have something like this, you know, I have this and I have this, and let's say I have this, and let's say I have this. How, how do I do this? You know, how do I tell someone that in, in a very easy and simple way that the OH is on this side uh, with the uh, ethyl group and the chlorine is on this side with the hydrogen group without, you know, taking so much space to write it all out. So the way that this is done is we have um, what we call E, E and Z naming naming rules, okay? So E is going to represent, all right, let me just write it out. So E is going to represent heaviest on opposite sides, okay? And I'll talk about what this means. Z means heaviest. And this can be mean heaviest or lightest. I'm just saying heaviest, okay? It's either or. Heaviest or lightest groups on the same side. So, and then heaviest or lightest groups on opposite sides, okay? So I'm just going to put lightest. Oops. Whatever, I can't edit it. All right. And the way I remember this, if uh, a really dumb way to remember this, Z, all right, since I said heaviest group, um, oh, I miswrote that. So, Z equals heaviest, oh, my bad, on the same side, okay? Yes, all right. And the way I remember this, I th say to myself, Z sounds like, so when I say Z and I'm I'm thinking okay same how do I remember Z is same side I think of the word uh, think of this same so same side so it's dumb it's really dumb but it, it, I've never forgotten it so Z I replaced the S with a Z so same so I never forget that Z means the heaviest or lightest groups are on the same side okay so. The way I figured this out, so let's just look at this one that I've drawn over here, right? And so what you do first, okay, first thing first, I'm going to split right down the middle of the, the bond, so perpendicular to the bond, okay? So perpendicular to the bond, I split it down the middle, and what I'm doing is I'm comparing the top and I'm comparing the bottom, all right, of, of each side, so the left side and the right side. On the left side, I'm comparing the top and the bottom, right? So, the top, I'm comparing which one's heavier and which one's lighter. So, obviously, a carbon, the same rules that you would use for RNS, by the way. So, I look at the first, uh, first atom that's attached and I compare it. So, uh, carbon is heavier than hydrogen. So, this is the H, right? And hydrogen is lighter. So, this is, I call this light, heavy. And then I compare O and Cl. So O is lighter than Cl. Cl is heavier. So this is the H over here. And O is lighter, right? So, okay, so I have H. And now once I do this, once I compare the left side, uh, left side and right side to their top and bottom, right? So I'm comparing, first I'm comparing the individual, uh, should I draw that? The individual carbons, right? So I look at the carbons and I compare what's on them and I say, uh, is the top one heavier? Is the bottom one heavier? What's going on? So I'm labeling it. And now once I've labeled it, I split it 
in half now, so parallel, and I look on on one side of the double bond, do I have both the heavy uh, heavy groups coming off the same side or are they opposite? So if I can see that the heavy and light are on uh, on the opposite side. So so light and heavy are together and heavy and light are together. So this is an E. This double bond will be referred to as E. And then this information give uh, combined with you know me labeling the substituents on this carbon will let whoever's naming uh, like writing it out figure out how to or like uh, arrange these groups so they'll know to put the OH up and they'll know to put the CL down with the hydrogen and they'll know to put this up with the uh, ethyl group so that's essentially how it works all right so um so that's that's essentially it and then we're going to do some examples and we're going to show how how it goes and I'll explain things as um, as I do examples. So, all right. So for this, let's, let's, I'm gonna do from top to bottom and then from the right side. So you're gonna have a bunch of different things, right? We're gonna have a lot of complicated names. Um, so first things first. Uh, these are all from the tests, though. So this is like tests 2016, 2015, 2014, and 2013. And I'm sorry I'm using these examples from the exam, but I don't think there's a better way to teach it. Um, and nomenclature is easy, so I'm not really taking much away from your practice. But um, yeah, just just to explain it. So, like I said, the first things first is to find the chain that has the most double bonds, right? And then I'm going to uh, you know look at all the other things that I already know are, are present. Okay, so that I, the rules. That I mean. So I'm looking at this chain and immediately I'm looking at these double bonds and I notice that I if I go from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I know that I have the chain that has two double bonds in it. Right? Is are there any other chains that have two double bonds in it? that I can do that are you know just as long. Um, the only one that I can see that has that both double bonds in it is if I go like this. So if I go like this, this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So six versus eight, I've clearly found my parent chain, right? So this is the only ch uh, chain, it's the longest one that has two double bonds. And now um, if I go in the other direction, right? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so if I'm going in the red direction, I have groups on, I have a methyl group on six. This is methyl. I have um, another methyl group on, um, oops, that's not six. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, three, All right, so this is three. And I have a methyl group on four. I have the double bond on four, okay? And then I have another group on six. So three, four, four, six. And um, by the way, whenever we're uh, like doing double bonds, I oh, depending on the direction I'm going, the first carbon that is part of the double bond is the number that's associated to the double bond. So, so like let's say this is one and two. When I refer to this double bond later in the, in the parent name, it's going to be referred to as one, this double bond is going to be, the location is going to be referred to as the location one, okay? So it's always the first carbon that you, you know, that touches the double bond as you're going down the chain that's going to be responsible for naming that the double bond. So four over here is the first carbon of this double bond, right? And then um, six and then seven, right? So four and seven are the locations where the double bond starts. And... Um, I go in this direction, right? I get one, right? Three, so I already have a winner. Uh, four, five, and six, okay? So this direction is my winner because I start earliest, all right? Um, so from here, all right? So I am going the black direction, and if I'm going the black direction, I am 
naming uh, all these groups. So first things I need to write out. Okay, so before I go into the parent chain stuff, let's write out all the substituents. So on three, I have a something that's one, two, three carbons long, right? So I have three, right? Propyl. All right. And then on four, and then on five, five methyl. Okay. And then on six, I have another methyl. So I have six. Yes, I know it's supposed to be together. Um, and then I also have RNS, right? Because whenever you see wedges and dashes, you need to be very skeptical and be like, okay, I probably have RNS. And we also have to indicate that as well in our name. So I have this group, this group, this group, um, and then I have double bonds, and I have the RNS and the E and Z. Okay, so don't forget about the E and Z. Okay, so I have a carbon group over here. So this is CH3. This is a CH2, CH3, and this is the all this crazy stuff. So I can say with pretty solid certainty that um, this is going to be my one. Okay. This is going to be my two. This is going to be my three. This is going to be my four. Okay. So one, two, three. So I'm going in this direction, right? So one, two, three. So this is R. All right. And my fourth group is not on a wedge, and it's not on a wedge that's next to a dash, right? So this is going to be R for sure. So I have 6R, all right? And I also have, and now I need to find, do I have any E or Z? So I know I have E or Z whenever I have a double bond that on on one side of it, on, on both sides, it has two unique groups on each side, right? So, for example, this double bond over here, it's terminal things that are coming off of it are two hydrogens. I can't compare two hydrogens, right? So, nor do I need to, right? So, if this is a terminal, if you ever have a terminal double bond, you do not have E or Z and you don't have, you know, sister trans, okay? Unless there's more hydrogens or whatever. But usually on a terminal double bond, always, you never have E or Z. Never. Ever. So it's only the ones that are in the middle, within the chain. And even then, sometimes, if the groups are the same on top or bottom, then you won't have the E or Z. So you always need to check, is this bottom group the different than this top group? Is this group different than, you know, the hydrogen, so the invisible hydrogen that's coming out? And now I need to compare them. So obviously these are all different. So I need to compare it. So let's do the left side first, okay? So the left side I have a CH3 group and then on the right side on the top, on the bottom I have the CH3 group and the top I have the CH2, CH2, CH3. So which one's heavier, right? If I had to compare the carbons and kept going down like I would do in RNS, this would obviously be the heavier side, right? I have carbon, 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 right? So top is heavy over here, bottom is light, and then over here, hydrogen is automatically always light. It's Nothing is uh, lighter than hydrogen, right? Even if you ever see D, by the way, if you ever see something and you have, well, that's not a chain. If you have a chain and you see like D coming off of it, this is deuterium, okay? Deuterium. It's the isotope of hydrogen and it's heavier than hydrogen. Okay, so hydrogen is usually always, almost always the lightest thing. I don't think there's anything lighter than hydrogen, uh, as far as I know. So heavy and light, heavy and light. So these are on opposite sides. So we have, right, we have, uh, this is 4E. Okay, I'm going to stop typing everything out. It takes too much time. But so I have 4E, 6R, 6-methyl, 3-propyl, 5-methyl. And now I need to order everything uh, alphabetically. So A, B, C, D, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. So P, M becomes for P. I always have to do that. Um, so my methyl groups come before it, right? But before I do anything on the on the chain itself, on the chain itself, or any of the groups, I have to put my R and E uh, and uh, before everything. So on, I have four E, 
six R and I'm I go in the order of like numbering, so four E six R. I don't go six R four E. Okay, so I do that, then uh, dash, right, and then I put um, my five six dimethyl, right, three propyl, right, and then now I have my parent. Right, and the double bonds are part of the parent. So, the part of the parent, and um, now I can go directly to my parent chain. So, my parent chain is an octane, right? But it's not, it's an octane in terms of just eight carbons, but it's different. It's, it has double bonds in it now. So, I have a different name for it. So, whenever you go from double bond, when we go from single bond to double bond, the parent name changes the last three letters. So it becomes, instead of A and E, becomes E and E, right? Octene, right? Instead of octane. So the way I do this numbering, okay, I put oct and the E-N, the E-N is the part that is, um, is the part that is referring to the double bonds. So right before that, I put the numbers of where the double bonds are. So I have one, right, four, di, in, diene, right? So, five, six, dimethyl, three, propyl, oct, one, four, diene, okay? So, this is how I would write this out. Another thing you can do, right, is um, you can put it in the, the beginning. So, propyl, one, one for um, oct, oct, I think it's octadiene, octadiene, I think so, okay, so um, let me see that differently, so octadiene, propyl oct, right, we'll figure out right now, I'm going to check the key. So I added a A, and uh, sometimes you have to add vowels, I believe. So whenever you're doing the die, you add an A, I believe. So um, I'm gonna check over here. Okay, yeah, so you add an A. You see that? So she added an A, so I got ER. So um, the reason why she didn't put the numbering is because whenever you only have one Kyle center and one E, E and Z or whatever, you don't have to number it. Because it's it's already it's already given that it's at that location because you only have one of them. So if they do the put the groups on the chain right, they should see that I have chem, uh, chirality here, and they should see that you know this double bond has E and Z. So you don't have to put the numbering, but I always put the numbering. It doesn't hurt, right? So so she got the E and Z five six dimethyl three propyl and then one four. So she said one four octa diene, and she says or, and you can put the one four in the middle right before the diene part. And I always like putting it there because I don't. I like just going from my last substituent all the way into my my parent. And I, I don't like putting the number there. I just like I like having it in the name. So you can do whatever you want. Uh, it doesn't matter. The only thing is just remember if you're putting the die or try, you have to add the a. You have to add the vowel before uh, the you know the consonant. So um, um, that's all they do, and that's not too bad. Okay, so let's look at this one now. So if I am uh, looking over here, I need to find the longest chain that has those double bonds, right? So now clearly I have I have a ring and I have a chain that's coming off of it. So I need to look where do I have the, the most double bonds and then if I have two chains that have the same amount of double bonds, I need to find the longest one. So this is one, two, three, four carbons long and it has one double bond in it. And this ring has six carbons, right? And it has one double bond in it. So this is gonna be my parent, this, this uh, hexene, cyclohexene. So this is my parent. Okay, and um, just let me see one second. Okay, so this is my parent, and now I need to number it. So I have this parent chain, and I my substituent is right here. One, this whole thing, and then this double bond. So I can name it one, two, or I can name it right. Um, 
get out of the way. One, two. So obviously it's better to name it one, two in the black, right? Because I at one, I get both of the double blend first and I get the substituent first. So we're going to go in the black direction. Okay. Um, so on one, I have a something that's, right? One, two, three, four carbons long. And then on carbon three, I have a cyclopropyl group. All right. And I also have a double bond. I need to worry about the E and Z. Okay. Um, one other thing I need to add is um, whenever you have double bonds inside a ring, um, you never have E and Z unless the ring is bigger than, I believe, uh, eight carbons. So, if you have double bonds in the ring, you don't do E and Z, but it has to be, uh, if you have it on chain and they have the unique groups, then you do E and Z. So double bonds within rings that are, uh, you know, six or seven, they are not, e, uh, you don't have E and Z, but I think eight or nine and above you have E and Z, but you won't have examples like that. Okay. So I have double one here. So this is one and I have this butyl group. So I have um, three, three, cyclopropyl, right? Three cyclopropyl, right? Uh, butyl, right? And then I also have another thing on this. Um, so is this right? Is it? Is this actually butyl? Uh, it's not, right? I have a double bond in it. So I have to add the E, the EN within the substituent because my substituent has a double bond. So on two, I have, right, I have a double bond, which also has E and Z. So this is three cyclopropyl but two NL, right? And then in the front, right? I have um, the two is where the double one is. And if I have to put the E and Z stuff, right, I have the top. So I have a hydrogen over here. The top is heavy and the bottom is light. Okay. And then over here, the top is heavy and the bottom is light. So the lights and the heavies are on the same side. So this is a Z. So I have two... 2z in the front, okay? So 2z, 3 cyclopropyl uh, but 2 nl and this is all off of carbon 1, all right? So this whole thing is on carbon 1, all right? And then you have the parent chain. So uh, let me just check if that's right. So yeah, so 1, parentheses, then... Like I said, if there's only one double bond, you only have to put the, you don't have to put the numbering, but I did Z3 cyclopropyl 2 but nl, and I'm pretty sure you can put the two over here, right? Since it's already in the middle. Um, I'm pretty sure it works the same way. Uh, if you're confused how I got the but nl, it's just, so normally it would be butyl, but I have to put the en after the, you know, the prefix part. So the but, so b u t. En, that's where it parts. Uh, the en comes in, and then the yl, right? So I drop the e at the end. That's uh, at the end of every chain uh, chain name, and I put yl because it's substituent. So I have all this, and then I have to put the parent name. So now the parent name is. So all this is coming off of cyclo hex, right? So this is the the prefix part. And then, right, one in. Okay. Everybody see that? So cyclo hex, and then since obviously it's only one of them in there, I don't have to number it, but I do it anyways. Okay. Uh, you're not going to really get any points off for doing that, I believe. So it doesn't add, it doesn't hurt to add extra detail to something. So the full name of this is 1, 2Z, 3 cyclopropyl but uh, but 2 nl cyclohex 1-ene, all right?
So a little bit complicated. There's a lot of things happening in this substituent, but just organize it very orderly. Okay, so parentheses, and then within the parentheses, I have the 2z and the parentheses of its own, and then 3 cyclopropyl, and then this can either come out over here, I believe, and you have the but 2 l cyclohex 1e. All right, let's move on. So now let's look at the next one. So I have this um, cyclo, cyclo uh, pentane, pentane, right? And I have uh, these groups on here. So I have, I can either go one, two, three, or I can go one, two, three, this direction. How do I figure out which direction is best? So I have one, two, three, right? Or one, two, three, and the bigger numbers. So um, I have to, have to look at the groups that are on here. So these all have methyls, right? Methyl, 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 right? And then I have the cyclo, cyclopropyl. Right, and um, I believe the C in cyclo uh, does count. Okay, so uh, I can check. I believe it does. Right, so the C in cyclo does count. So this is one. So um, the C in cyclo, I'm going to look at the groups that are off here and um, the C is higher alphabetical priority than these methyls. Um, so I'm going to go in this direction first. One, two, three. So I can get to my C, uh, C substituent first. So um, I have one, two, three now. And uh, ugh, that does not work. Okay. And I need to name this. So first thing I need to realize is that I have wedge and dashes. So I need to be careful if I have stereochemistry or not. Right, uh, a chiral center, not stereochemistry. I always have stereochemistry on rings, but you need to see if I have a chiral center. So clearly, the number one carbon is a chiral center. Number two, a uh, number three carbon though has two methyl groups, and they're that does uh, have two of the same group, so that's no longer chiral, right? So only number one is a chiral center because I have this group, I have a methyl group, and I have all this uniqueness going on over here. Okay, so um, let's see. All right, so one is going to be in a different color. I have, so I have a cyclopropyl, I have a bunch of carbons, right, everywhere. So I need to compare the carbon. So if you, if I compare it, this is a carbon connected to two other carbons, right? This is a carbon connected to one other carbon. This is a carbon connected to one other carbon. And this is a carbon connected to three hydrogens. So this is the this is the definitely four right away. I'm gonna tell everybody that right now. This is four, and this is going to be uh, one, right? And if I look on the on these two parts, which one is fastest to getting to the center that has more carbons on it? So I have one carbon over here. I have one carbon over here. They're the same. I have one carbon over here, and I have this carbon over here. This one is much heavier than this one. So this direction is the heavier side. So this is going to be two down here. Okay. This is going to be three. Okay. So I'm going R and my fourth group is on a dash. So I have R. So I have uh, one R. That goes out in the front. Okay, and then I have one cyclo propyl. Okay, and then I have, I have a methyl group on two, I have a methyl group on three, and I have another methyl group on three. So I have two, three, three. Uh, Trimethyl, right? Cyclo pint ain. Okay, so one R, one cyclopropyl, two, three, three, trimethyl, cyclopentane. Okay, so one R, one cyclopropyl, one, three, three, right? Did I do that right? Oh, I meant I put two for some reason. So this should be one, right? right? 
Dumb mistakes. 133 trimethyl cyclopentane. Okay, not that bad really. All right, uh, let's move along. Uh, maybe we don't have time to do all these examples, but um, let's see which one looks the hardest. Uh, let's see. Well, I need to do one with a bromine on it. So let's just let's keep doing, uh, keep going in the order that we're going. All right. So um, if I look at this chain over here, all right. So I need to find the longest, uh, the most double bonds, where the most double bonds are. So if I look, it's probably along the, this chain right here. So I'm just going to say I have one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five. And um, if I name the opposite direction, right? And I hope everyone noticed that the this 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 direction right here is the same, right? It's the it's the same uh, it's symmetric to the top part, so it doesn't matter if I go into this or go into that. And if I name this way, I have one, two, three, four, five. If I go in the red direction, I get one, right? I get three. I get uh, four. 4, 4, and then I get uh, 5. Okay, if I go in the black direction, I get 1, I get 1, right? So both this and this are coming off of 1. So the double bond starts at 1, and the ring starts at 1, and then I get 2, right? So I already know I have a winning direction. 2, and then I get 3, and then I get 4, all right? So the black direction is the direction I want to go. And I need to start naming this. So all the groups that I have on here, I have one cyclo cyclohexyl. All right. And the way I num I name um, halogens, they never have YL on them, whether on the parent or the substituent. They never have YL. Okay. They're always um, they're always, okay, so I have two, and um, so it's bromine, and the way I, I always name them is you replace, the, you replace the I and E at the part, so iodine, bromine, chlorine, uh, fluorine, you always replace it with O. So bromine, brom, the E is now O. So bromo, chloro, fluoro, iodo. So I have that, okay? And then on three... I have a something that's one, two carbons long, right? So I have a I have a um, ethyl group, right, with a double bond in it. So here I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put the numbering, okay? Uh, it's too short and it's not really. It's very obvious that the double bond has to fall here. It can't be over here. Um, it's not gonna be over here. So. Um, uh, yes, so these are symmetric, and if the one was over here, then this would be a completely different situation, but it's over here, and it's at the end, and I'm not going to be, I don't care to put the number for where it is, um, so it's going to be 3 ethanol, okay, so 3 ethanol, and then, um, aside from that, um, now I need to have, let me check if I have any E or Z. So I said terminal double bonds don't have E or Z. I have one internal one. Okay. So this internal one right here, I have a bromine, I have this group, and I have uh, hydrogen, right, sticking out. And, um, okay. So I need to label the heavy and lighter groups. So the bromine is heavier than carbon. The first thing that's attached is carbon. So this is going to be the heavy, and this is going to be the light, okay? And then hydrogen is always light, and this is going to be heavy, obviously. So heavy and light, heavy and light on opposite sides. So this is going to be 1E, e, right? All right? So I have 1E e on the front, all right? 
and I'm going to just type this up because it's neater that way. So I have um, 1e, e, right? I don't have to put the 1 because it's on, there's only um, 1 of these e and z's. So I have 1e, e, and then um, and now I need to put all the groups in order. So I have the cyclohexyl, I have the bromo, I have the ethyl, ethanol, and then I have the double ones uh, that are inside the uh, chain itself. So what comes first? B comes before C, so one bromo. I mean, two bromo. And then one cyclohex. Right? And then I have three ethanol. Right? And then my parent, my parent is five carbons long. So, um, so that's pint. Right? Pint. So normally it would be pentane, but now it's going to be pentene. So before the, the E part, uh, the E N part, I'm going to put my numbering for where things are. So I have 1, 4, all right, diene. All right, does everybody see that, essentially? So I have, I have this now for this name. Uh, okay. All right, so I'm put that right there. Okay, so that's for this one right here. Uh, that's, that's for this one right here. This one. Okay, um, and now um, on this side, I have all these things. Okay, um, I don't really have the time to do all these, but I think it should be pretty... Um, I've explained all the stuff now. So halogens and double bonds, internal ones, uh, terminal ones, E and Z, R and S, and how to put everything on the ring. So um, just keep doing some practice and it should be pretty straightforward. All right. So that should conclude uh, the nomenclature video. All right. Bye.